Vice President Yamio Shibanjo has challenged the Nigerian Bar Association to work towards reforming the Nigerian judicial process to ensure the speedy dispensation of justice in the country. The Vice President posed the challenge on Wednesday when he virtually declared open the annual national conference of the Nigerian Bar Association in Lagos, where he represented President Muhammad Buhari. The Vice President wants to see judicial reforms that will fast track all court cases so that the longest will be a maximum of 15 months. When the federal law enforcers investigate rape cases and make arrests, securing convictions is paged again on the work of state prosecutors. I believe these points, and this point in particular, that no branch or chair of government can undertake the reforms necessary to enhance justice delivery on its own. We need partnerships of progress between federal and state governments and also the legal profession and our administration of the justice system. We need the collaboration of the executive and the legislature also at all levels to drive the reforms that we need. Mr. President of the Bar, the next 60 years will see a vastly different country. We will be the fourth largest country by population in the world. And we can be one of the ten largest economies in the world. We can be one of the most technologically advanced. We can be the safest place on earth to live and work. We can have a fair and just society, assuring all of our people, regardless of ethnicity or religion, of equal opportunities. Joining us now to look at the practicality of the president's advocacy is legal practitioner Dele Faratimi. We're also joined by Felix Mocker, the executive director, Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, Sarah. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on the program. Now, the vice president, Yamio Shibanjo, is of the view that cases should not last more than 15 months. How realistic is this? I'll start with you, uh, Mr. Faratimi. Good morning, Mr. Moka. Good morning, Sage. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm sorry. Um, I will start with a Yoruba proverb. Don't worry, I will interpret. The Yorubas will say that Oguaro Kojo as Ese Niko Balai. The cripple would love to dance, you see. He would love a shuffle, the fox trot, but his legs incapacitate him. Professor Oshibaji was my lecturer. He taught me the law of evidence. Fantastic man. One of the most brilliant human beings I ever came across in my life. But what he has just enunciated, I best described as wishful thinking. You don't place something on nothing. Exactly what legal infrastructure does, Mr. Or does Professor Oshibaji and the Nigerian government, or the state for that matter, expect to place these fantastic dreams that would have speedy dispensation of justice when the totality of the system itself, both the human and physical infrastructure, have practically decayed to the point where the judicial system is anything but systemic and there is hardly any justice to be found there. So when they begin to spout all these high ideals without looking at the reality, when was the last time any court was up opened in Lagos State, especially at the magistracy level? And what is the level of capacity at the federal level itself? We're looking at a situation where, in both, in, both in terms of human resources, both in terms of national infrastructure, both in terms of the enabling environment itself, these things are simply not in place. And then five years into the administration, where the number two man, is a professor of law who, who had been an attorney general at state level. The most progressive bad is here in Lagos. Eight years, they were unable to do anything. He was here. And then at the federal level, I'm hearing this fantastic story of how they are going well, to... Let, let, me, let me ask you this, Mr. Faratimi. Everything starts yes, with a dream. We, we will always have problems, but should we be looking at the problems that will hamper... Um, 
a realization of such a dream, or we should look at how we can, in spite of these challenges, be able to do something, make a step, take a move towards actualizing this dream, which you say it's a good dream. Oh, it's a fantastic dream, but there is a world of difference between a vision and a fantasy. In the first place, we're in a society where the law does not rule. Let's get that clear. The will of men rules. So, ab initio, you have a foundation that cannot carry the aspiration that you are busy. The, what you are preaching is not sustainable given the realities on the ground. And you've not done anything in five years to suggest that what you are saying are achievable. So, please. I have heard enough of all sorts of fantastic stories, not just from the APC, mind you, and not just from Professor Shibajo, but this is a point that I am being asked, and I'm telling you, let's get it clear. Aside from expressing the wish, there is a lacuna between what is here in real life and what the vice president is speaking of. He's all speaking right. of aspirations. That's why I spoke of the crippled man who is talking about wanting to dance. All right, let's bring he in Mr. He's capable Umoka. of doing anything. Please, separate the fantasy. I can't grow any taller than I am. All right, it's not let's, let's, let's hear Mr. Umoka's uh, thoughts on this. Let's start from, also, do you think it's too fantastic an idea, impracticable? Well, um, just like my colleague uh, began with a proverb, I, you know, I would say that um, uh, there's no right time to do the wrong thing. And there's no wrong time to do the right thing. You know, I share the thoughts and concerns that my colleague has expressed. Uh, but I think that um, the suggestion that the government intends to, you know, attempt to uh, shorten the time uh, or to, you know, create the conditions for the speedy delivery of justice, you know, sounds like music. It's, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful idea. I mean, this is not the time to be completely uh, pessimistic about the prospects of actually you know, having that you know, done or realized. But I think that it's a practical question. I think that's what my colleague is saying. You know, but it's not enough to simply you know, declare some of these you know, um, aspirations. You must seriously you know, go to the basics and begin to audit the legal system, audit your judicial system. Because it's not just about the MBA. It's not about the Nigerian Bar Association or by the courts, or by the judges. You know, justice is a multi-sectoral, you know, uh, service. It's about the courts, it's about lawyers, it's about litigants, it's about, you know, the economy, it's about, you know, something as basic as, as energy, as power. You know, what, what, what is, in, let, me, let, let, me, let me interrupt you yeah. and just ask quickly um, from uh, what you were saying, what is the position of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act um, on this? The, the AJC, which was promulgated just very recently, uh, just a few years ago, about five years ago, in 2015, um, does, in fact, have provisions that encourage, you know, speedy delivery of justice. Um, but the question is, you know, is it actually uh, helping to facilitate justice? How, you know, far has the, you know, government and the judicial system and the legal system gone in ensuring that you know, some of those provisions are, are implemented. And so that's why it still comes down to the practicalities, the, the reality of the, uh, you know, the, the conditions uh, that, that prevail when you look at whether it's the criminal sector or the civil, uh, civil proceedings. It's really about the capacity to deliver justice um, as prescribed by law or as suggested by the state. All right, uh, let's come back to you, uh, Mr. Farotimi. Audrey Zocalo's case, true, uh, many uh, believe true, um, a spanner on the issues around the act. Um, do you think that the uh, Administration of Criminal Justice Act is still relevant? You see, at the beginning of this section, I started with a proverb. Keep it in mind. Because it is very important. Everything flows from capacity, everything. But capacity itself flows from political will because it is what you want that you build towards. 
Nigeria is not structured to deliver justice. It is structured to work on impunity. And when a system is structured to work on impunity, what you find constantly is that there will be one set of justice for the poor and another available to the rich. If Mr. Oji Uzokalu were not to be a member of the Nigerian ruling class, he will still be safely ensconced where he was sent because nobody has said he wasn't guilty of that. It was all about a technicality. Now, you can blame that on an act, but acts are drafted by men, and justice itself is a process administered by men. Where the court focuses more on the technicality of justice delivery and then strips itself of the capacity to actually deliver justice, because if you think about it, there are abians on whose behalf justice was delivered. Now, because of a technicality, one man has benefited and walked away. We have not seen any, see, because this issue is important to an appreciation of our problems. How many other persons were similarly affected or would be affected or are unable to afford the kind of legal expertise that Mr. Oji Uzokalu could afford. So there are several levels here. So it's not really about the law itself. We should focus on the system and what it is designed to achieve. We are always, we are, we are always distracted by these arguments that comes down to the persons. But we must understand that those discretions, those little technicalities, those are the habitations of systemic injustice or because it becomes unjust now that a man has walked away and the people have been despoiled. Nobody has argued about the despoilation of those people. But not only is the man out, based on a technicality, there, haven't been, there hasn't been any move to take him back to trial. He's back in the, he's back in the House, uh, in, the, in the Senate. That same Senate is already talking about the review of the 1999 constitution. Again, I I'm sorry to keep interjecting, Mr. Alparatimi, but yeah. you, you said no move. Uh, let's talk about that a little. We must start from somewhere. No move seems to be made to um, get Mr. Kalu uh, back to court. Isn't that where the MBA comes in? Whose responsibility is it to push for issues like this that many say it is not on the merits, like you said, of the case that the man was um, released, but on a technicality. So he still has questions to answer. Um, it is not in the nature of the Nigerian ruling class or the state to go after somebody that is a member of his own class, save and accept when that man has run afoul and there is a systemic or rather a class struggle. Now, let to address the question you have asked. The Nigerian Bar Association stopped being the kind of body that would push those kind of points. Years back, years ago, it stopped. The, the, the Nigerian Bar Association that we have today is not the Nigerian Bar Association of the Alao Akaba Shoro. It's not the Nigerian Bar Association that we grew up to find. I've had occasion to actually ask if I need to remain a member of the NBA to practice as a lawyer. Now, it is not the remit of the NBA under the law, but it would have been a fantastic idea if the NBA were to be alive to its duty, because how can it be well with Nigeria <clears> and with the law profession if it is not well with Nigeria itself? So unfortunately, the NBA has taken itself out of the picture when it comes to pressing what should be in the public interest. So it's not been a, a public interest advocacy point in Nigeria for quite a while. All right. Now, having said that, okay. Mr. Paul Usoro has left or is leaving and there is a new president coming onto the seat. It's up to Mr. Olumide Akwata to decide what kind of back he wants to lead. But that question is relevant only insofar as it relates to the fact that if the Nigerian Bar Association 
what he, they are alive to his historic duties. What the likes of Serap are doing is what the NBA ought to be doing. I don't know how the NBA facilitates their work, if it facilitates their work, but the NBA that I was called into when I came to the Nigerian bar would not have the kind of speakers it has had at its AGC or even in the previous year. So it's not the same. The NBA is not All interested right. in let, let like me bring this. Mr. Least, Mr. Mokka. interested in things like this for some years. Let, let me ask this of Mr. Mokka. It's an offshoot of what Mr. Farotimi said. He, he, he alluded to the fact that... Um, the ruling class uh, might hesitate to uh, take on their own in the issue of um, the instance of uh, Mr. Kalu. Um, do you think that is a fair assessment of this current administration whose um, mantra came with anti-corruption and we've seen quite a few moves uh, from them to uh, try and um, bring the issue of corruption um, to some semblance of control? Uh, thank you. First, let me remark that I'm Felix Mocha. I'm the executive director of the Social and Economic Rights Action Center, CERAC, with oh, a C. Bye -bye. Sorry. Yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> but that, that's fine. Look, um, look, I agree. This government came on the platform of you know, combating corruption. And it has done you know, quite a fair amount of work you know, fighting corruption in the country. But it is also true that it is extremely difficult uh, for a government to you know, combat people who are so highly influential, who wield enormous resources and power, and especially people who have access to the current platforms of leadership. You know, it, it's, it's extremely difficult because it's, the political will to do so is, is sometimes not lacking. And besides, what we're discussing is so pervasive. It's not just about, you know, Carlo. Uh, there are so many other highly placed you know, citizens of this country who have a date with the law, who have committed massive you know, violations of the laws of this country, but who are walking free. Whereas there are few people you know, who are willing to actually you know, bring them to justice. So this is really about you know, just the very high inequity you know, in, in access to justice in this country. Because in, oftentimes, those who are wrong, who don't have the power to compel the state uh, or to force the state to, to take action, are left without any sort of remedy. So it's, 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 it's a terrible disincentive, I think, to those who might want to consistently uh, follow the law, uh, to have sort of a situation where, you know, people violate the law, but because of who they are, you know, they are able to walk away. Therefore, the question is no longer about what, what is at stake, but who is involved, you know, uh, on the scale of justice. And I think that's really unfair. And it's not something we should, you know, um, continue to condone. Justice okay, should fair. apply, you know, fairly, equitably, and equally to every citizen, irrespective of class, irrespective of, you know, status, irrespective of, you know, um, you know where they come from or what kind of religion they practice. But All we right. find that, you know, oftentimes justice is not blind, as, as you know, proverbially, uh, proverbially uh, you know, uh, as it's said to be. But you know, it, it's a challenge. All right, that we must before overcome. we come and it's not to, just about you know, this government, it's about the future government. And I agree with, again, my colleague about the MBA, that the MBA has, you know, uh, lost its vitality. Uh, there used to be a time when the MBA was, you know, really uh, an instrument for, you know, I mean, a, a champion of social justice. But those days are gone. The MBA can barely govern itself. I mean, the other time I went to my branch to renew my, uh, to pay my dues and, and pay my obligations to the MBA, you know, I was told that even in 2020, we continue to do things, you know, as though we live in, in, in the 1915, uh, you know, era. The NBA has not managed to Mr. You know, Mocha, I mean, recreate so, so itself, we can better you know, manage... recreate its own capacity to administer the association. So I think that it needs to focus and get its own organization right and then be able to pursue its um, social justice obligations as well. All right, I, I was going to ask you something um, on uh, the vice president's uh, recommendation, but I'm told we have less than three minutes uh, to uh, conclude this part of the conversation. So I'll just go straight and ask that there are many loopholes in the justice administration uh, which smart lawyers use to delay justice um, in this country. Can this be addressed? Yes, yes, it can. It can, with the right commitment, uh, the political will, and I think a resolve 
you know, to actually create those conditions for, you know, access to justice. Yes, nothing is impossible because in other countries that are less, you know, with less resources and less clout than Nigeria, you know, people have access to justice. Justice is not nearly as, as, as painful uh, as it is in this country. Um, a case I was involved in 1990, which involved the demolition of the Marocco community, was filed in 1990, was not resolved until 2015. You know, that's about 25 years. There's no excuse. So I think that any government in this country that has the right will uh, can at least begin the process. It's not something you, you accomplish in one year or in two years, but it's a, a systematic you know, type of program uh, that can, in fact, begin to scratch the surface of the kind of delay we have in our system. All because right. it's not just about the courts. It's about the police as well. It's about the law enforcement system. It's about the prison service. It's about uh, litigants. It's about the lack of technology in our courts. You know, you have a judge who is, you know, I mean, has on his or her list 30, 40 cases a day and has to take down every word said in the courtroom in longhand without right. any kind of technologies. It's impossible to imagine, uh, you know, a quicker... Uh, sort of delivery of All right, let's, let's give uh, Mr. Farotimi some uh, time yeah. to uh, put in his last words uh, on this matter. I, I know you are a bit uh, pessimistic as to us being able to realize this dream, but if we were to try, what should be some of the moves in your thinking that we can begin to put forward collectively, both government and relevant uh, bodies, to try and come to this point? Everything is about foundation. I'm not a pessimist. I'm a realist. When you ask me how you build a five-story structure on a foundation that I know is not even designed to carry a single-story building, I find it difficult to focus on what you have had because I know you are asking for the impossible in view of the realities. When we speak about speedy delivery of justice, we're suggesting that what we have right now is not what the system is designed to deliver. That is where the problem lies between myself and most people who are asked to comment on the Nigerian issue. I'm explaining to you that what we have right now is what the system is designed to deliver. If a, if, if a system is not designed to deliver justice, how can it give you speed? Because it is in the slowness that people who make money will make their money. They've created their bottlenecks from where to make it. So for, for the layman it's listening, you're, 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 you're advocating you're for a redesign of the entire system. For, I mean, I'm for, sorry? As I'm saying for the layman watching, you're advocating that we begin from the very root, redesign the system it's itself. It's inevitable. It's our only choice. We have no choice unless we keep lying to ourselves. You have to go to the root reasons why we have what we have. It's not accidental that in almost 60 years, we've merely gone backwards. My colleague was talking about 1915 infrastructure. 1915, we governed every structure, every part of our system we were better governed in 1915 than they are now. That should tell us something about how far back we are walking. All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for your time and the insight you've brought to the conversation.